It is June of 2021 and we're heading up to Redsquirl Road. It is 110 kilometers north of North Bay, just off Highway 11. Welcome to our escapades. Ursula is the navigator, my name is Dieter and I'm the wheelman. The Redsquirl Road is reasonably well maintained and it is all on Crown Land. We will talk about Crown Land in a minute and show you how to get the information directly from the source. We visited the Red Squirrel Road several times before. Read the signs. There may be changes that are not in the Crown Land Atlas. One such example is this. Red Squirrel Road is closed to vehicles around the 30 km mark but there are many side trails leading to lakes and possibly some great blueberry patches. This is the path we took. We didn't branch off the Red Squirrel Road much. And the same trail from the air. Several lakes along the road are good for fishing. To find Crown Land information, Enter Ontario Crown Land Use in the search bar. Select the Crown Land Use Policy Atlas-Ontario.ca, which is likely one of the top options. The page has a big button to open the Crown Land Use Policy Atlas, but there is more important information and we'll get to that in a minute. Click the button. Read and accept the license agreement. The Ontario map opens and you can zoom into the place. We now have the Red Squirrel Road on the screen. Click Find Information, open the side panel and click Get Land Use Information. Click the blue circle and on the map to get the land use information for G1974. You can zoom to the full G1974 area if this is needed. We are only interested in the document. There is a commercial and land management info, but we are interested in the recreation activities and facilities chapter. The camping, road use and fishing is of prime interest. Very important, all fire restrictions apply to all areas without exception. If there is a fire ban, that means that there is absolutely no open fire anywhere. Zooming out and looking at other areas. They are all color coded. Gray means general use area. Yellow is conservation reserve. Green is provincial park and so on. Keep in mind, there are much stricter rules for the non-gray or general use areas. Make sure you know the difference. On the launch page we also had the What can I do on Crown Land? Please read the page. It's all about where to camp and how long, non-resident permit rules, watercraft, fishing, snowmobiles, ATVs and much more. We'll talk about fishing resources in a minute when we arrive at this amazing lake. When you spend time on Crown Land, it is up to you to keep it clean. Please visit leavenotrace.ca website and follow the rules, all of them. Thank you. We were about five minutes into Red Squirrel Road and took an old logging side road. There is plenty of firewood in these places, all dry and in small manageable sizes. On the Ontario.ca website, there is a document with the title Using Wood from Crown Land for Personal Use. The document covers campfires and home heating 
small landscaping projects and hobbies. The only topic we discuss here is the campfire wood. We are allowed to take downed wood or cut standing dead wood. Since we don't have mechanical tools, standing dead wood is not really an option for us. There is a limit of 10 cubic meters for downed dead wood, but that is nowhere near the 10 logs we usually need for our campfire. And this is what happens when you park your car and the apps on the phone can't locate your car anymore. Be aware that there is usually no cell phone reception once you enter Crown Land. These abandoned logging side roads can be tricky. The water puddles may hide deep ruts and caution is advised. When you approach these puddles, investigate first and continue with one set of wheels on solid ground. Never leave the road with the wheels as they will cause damage to the shoulder and may cause washouts. We carry traction pads and putting them down over the soft spots may prevent getting stuck. The sand around here is naturally occurring. It was deposited thousands of years ago when the glaciers retreated. As we pointed out in our off-road video from Barnett Lake and Tower Road, where there is sand, there are blueberries. You never know what you will encounter on these logging roads. Most of them build a network within the harvested patch of land with only one entrance and exit. It is rare that they continue to places beyond the new growth. They usually just end, some of them in a turnaround that is ideal for setting up camp. But don't be surprised if you have to back out, as there is not always space to turn the vehicle around. And here is a look at our high-tech cutting tool, the bow saw. Putting work into harvesting our own firewood makes us appreciate the warm, crackling campfire even more. We were at Finlayson Point Provincial Park. The mosquitoes and black flies were humming, but we managed okay. One of our fancy trailer additions is the mosquito net around the awning. It really works well. At night it's tied up to allow the critters free passage. Earlier that day, we explored Red Squirrel Road and pulled out on a potential campsite. Wow, what a place! It is not often that we come across a site that has room for two cars and tents. The beach is not overgrown with grasses. It looks like a big lake and this here is a sidearm. I'm not sure which lake it was. I didn't see why swimming would be a problem or launching the canoe. Fishing in the lakes around here is mostly permitted, but to be sure, we have to get the regulations from the Ontario.ca website. Enter Fish Online in the search bar. Select the How To Fish Online, which is likely to be one of the top options. The page has information about fishing and licensing in Ontario. We are after Fish Online. Scroll down and accept the license agreement. Zoom in to the place that is of interest or select Water Body Name under the search banner. Type the name and the map readjusts to the lake. Switch to the Fish Consumption Advisory if there is one for that water body. This is also an indication of the type of fish in the lake. Lots of good information here. Now all you need is luck to get your free dinner.
It was already past 8 when we continued to the end of Red Squirrel Road. With the sun in our face, we had only minutes left to enjoy the sunset. In the distance, we noticed an opening in the trees. The road was closed, we saw the gate in the distance and turned the jeep around. We backed in, knowing that it will be dark by the time we made our way home. The sights and sounds were amazing. So were the flying pests. The beaver was active, but too far away. Shortly before 10 o'clock, we headed back to the camp. It was well worth the drive to the end of the world. With the rigid Pro off-road lights, the road was well lit, but we didn't encounter any wildlife. We had an amazing time in the woods and brought back great memories. Thank you for watching and we'll see you out there.